Hey everyone, Josh here with a look at another Star Wars toy, and today we're going to unbox a General Grievous Black Series, so let's go cut this guy loose. Alright everybody, here we are with a Black Series General Grievous, and we're going to unbox this figure today. But before we get that far, let's take a quick look at the packaging, and I'll go ahead and spin this thing around for you guys so you can see the sides and the back of it. So, one of the things you're going to notice right away is the numbering on the box. So, you see it's called D1, and from my understanding, what's going on here is... Hasbro is going to start a new numbering system for the larger figures, and there's going to be Deluxe 1. So in the Deluxe line, since General Grievous is kind of a larger character, and there's been some other recent characters released like that this, but they're store exclusives, so they didn't get numbers. And one example is like the Gamorrean Guard and Moloch from the uh, Solo movie. They're larger figures. They come in larger boxes. And so... I guess General Grievous is going to be the first one that they um, change to the... They start numbering with the deluxe lettering in front of the number. So he is known as D1 in his numbering. And my understanding is that is for deluxe one. He's part of the what's called deluxe line. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back of the packaging here. And what you have is a piece of artwork of General Grievous, of course like normal, and then a quick description of the general, and I will go ahead and read that to you guys. General Grievous was a brilliant separatist military strategist and a feared Jedi hunter, known for his ruthlessness and hacking cough. His body itself was a weapon, allowing him lightning quick strikes and devastating blows. But he was also quick to run from a fight, a tactic which worked until his one final meeting with Obi-Wan Kenobi. And so if you are a fan of General Grievous, you may also know he played a fairly large role in the Clone Wars animated TV show. So they had a lot of episodes with him in there. But of course, he's most famous for appearing in Episode 3 and... Of course, they described their General Kenobi taking him out. But let's go ahead and get this guy out of here. I'm kind of dying to get my hands on this figure myself. So um, let's unbox this guy and see what this thing is all about. And right away, I'm pretty excited with, about what I'm seeing here because we have multiple lightsabers and a blaster as well and then a, a cloth cape. So... And I am feeling some very large rubber bands. Okay, and they have him rubber banded in here, so we're going to have to cut him out because it goes around his feet here. But let's go ahead and pop these accessories out here. So you have a blaster. And mine seems to be just warped a little bit, but that's okay. And then, of course, you have the four lightsabers that he comes with. And you can see you get two blue and two green. And it looks like all the handles are different. So you can see there, they got a little bit of gold highlighting, black and silver. Handle on one of the blue ones. One of the green ones here. And we will take a closer look at these in a second when we... See how well he interacts with these things. We'll just take a quick look at them in the box here. And finally another green one. And then here we go. I am looking at him and yeah, there's a big rubber band holding him in. Looks like it might be two here. Okay. I think he may be loose. Okay. And as you can already see, the cape on him is cloth and I am trying to see how to get him out of here without damaging him because some of his limbs do look a little bit fragile let's see here okay I do have one of his arms poked through the packaging here and then you gotta pull the cape through alright the general is loose. There he is. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's see here. Let's take a look at him with the cape on here, guys. 
So there he is, cape on, all four limbs. You can see his back there. We'll get the cape off him here. I just want to show you guys what he looks like with all the way he comes out of the box. So there he comes out of the box, and then let's see how does this cape attach. And then one of the things I'm seeing right off the bat here is you kind of have you have pockets for the lightsabers, and so I'm gonna assume that the blades come out of the lightsabers. We'll check that here in a second. And I'm wondering, okay, so the cape is stitched here, and what you have is I thought there might be like a little velcro piece or something, but no, it's it's they got a stitch running through holding it together, and it does not come off. There's no button or anything or buckle, so you just got to kind of pull it over his head. And there you go, there's the cape, and you can see there's the stitching I was talking about, it's just so it just drops over his head. Cloth cape, gray on the outside, red on the inside with four pockets. And then here he is with the cape off. So, and one of the things I'm curious, I want to check out his arms here. And of course, if you remember from the movie, he starts out with, when he gets in that fight with Obi-Wan, he starts out with only two of his arms out and they separate. I'm just wondering if they actually have the way you can connect the four arms together here so um we're gonna run through his movements here and obviously he's gonna be a little bit different because he's not your standard humanoid type figure so i'm trying to look at how he's all put together his arms and everything so let's just go real quick we're gonna run through his movements here and so the first thing we're gonna start is at his head and so you have an up and down movement and he's got he his head swivels on his neck and just to get a close up of his face if you guys want to see what the sculpt of the head looks like there it is and um pretty good detailing under the eyes the eyes are very well done but you can actually see the um, red skin features because you know he is a cyborg so underneath his armor there is actually a creature in there but you can actually see the red like flesh under his eyes and everything but we're still running through his movements here but here you go you have so you have a rotation that goes all the way around where his neck or his head is connected to his neck and so you have a full rotation there and then on his neck where his neck is connected to his body you can see you have a little bit of up and down and that is about it and you can see how his neck is like a bunch of tubes and metal shafts and things like that so that's pretty cool and that is about it you have a little bit of side to side where his neck is connected to his body but there it looks like there is a limit to it okay and then some going down from there what you have here is let's look at his arms and so his arms are very interesting okay so there's like a piece here that in the that's attached to his shoulders and that rotates and then there's a and it's kind of like a little rectangular piece that's attached to his shoulders and so you can rotate his arms around and then and I know it's hard to see through his armor and everything but there is like a rectangular piece in here that's his shoulder part. And then you have two pieces that are like on um, ball joints and hinge pieces that are where the individual arms are connected to the rectangular piece. So then you, you're going to have a rotation on the shoulder where you can rotate it and then you're going to have the up and down movement which is where the individual arms are connected so the rotation it's in two places you have rotation on the little arm and then you have rotation where the little arms are connected to a piece that are connected to his body <laughs> so, <laughs> i know that's a little bit confusing but you just there's multiple points of rotate rotation of articulation on his shoulder and then you have a little bit of up and down on the piece that is connected to his body that is connected to his arms so but you do have up and down movement with the arms like that and then each arm has an individual well this is pretty 
pretty impressive <laughs> individual um, elbow so and then each elbow has a swivel to it but it's not at the elbow the point of articulation if you look is right here where his arm is coming out So it rotates, but the point of articulation is right about here. And it, you, so you have a rotation, but then you have an up and down point of articulation that is actually at the elbow. So there you go. And then I'm trying to see after that, do you have wrist articulation? No. So there's no wrist articulation. But if you look, you can see there's a little hole here. And what I'm hoping that that is, because I haven't really had a chance to fiddle with this figure, this is the first time, is that you're gonna be able to connect the two arms together to make them one like it was in the movie. So if you look at the top arm here, you can see on the upper part of the arm, there's a little slot. And then on the lower part of the arm, the forearm, it's a little bit harder to see, but there is a, another slot right here on his forearm. And then if you look at his hand, you can see there's a little tiny hole. And that is the upper arm. And then on the lower arm, you can see there's a tab on the upper arm. And then there's another tab on his forearm right here. And then you have a little pin on his... There we go. Then you have a little pin on his... Um, Lower arm, or his lower hand, excuse me. So I'm going to run with the assumption, and let's try this out here, that we can connect the two arms together to make them one. Okay, so you can see where they insert together there on the upper arm. I guess what would be his bicep. And then, let's see here. How is this going to work on his lower arm? Okay. And you gotta have these lined up, it appears pretty. Hmm, okay. I think this may be the first grievous figure that they've actually attempted to do the arm connecting. Okay, it's not really. Oh, I guess it is staying together. It's not clicking together like you'd expect, but you can feel it going together and you can feel the part inserting and then I'm hoping that the tab on his hand is going to hold it all together. Hmm. Okay. So there you go. You got the arm all put together, the upper and the lower part. And you can see you got the two thumbs on his his hands there so they're working together but so the connecting points there's one in the hand there's one on the forearm and there's one here on the upper arm and so this is why you want to have multiple points of articulation at the shoulder so then once you connect these two arms you're going to lose some of your articulation at the shoulder but because it's on a separate piece and this is why they did this you have then you have rotation with the arms when they're connected together and yeah and well it's pretty impressive they and the arms stay together when you bend the elbow i'm surprised they're able to pull that off <laughs> that is pretty impressive you can see they separate a little bit so when you have the arm straight like that the elbows are together and then when you go to bend his elbow okay it is coming apart on me a little bit i, I I'm going to admit, guys, doing the getting his two arms to attach and still have movement is going to be a pretty tricky thing for an action figure to pull off. So the fact that they got this close, I'm actually kind of impressed by that, by that. But you can see when you start moving it a little more, you start losing the connectivity of the two arms. It still has movement and everything, but... It, it doesn't totally stay together, but you got to admit, that's a pretty tough task for an action figure to pull off. So I'm actually pretty impressed they got it, got it this far. So that is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to run with the assumption that both arms are like that. And I'm finding it that, let's see if we can get the other arm to stick together like that. Um, It feels like to get them to, the two arms to connect together... 
you got to have them kind of out straight like this. And you got to get the tab and the hole to line up just right. And then you got to press them together and they go together. And finally, there's the hand. Okay. So. Hmm. Okay. So there you go. There is two armed Grievous. That's what he looks like. So it is doable. The, the arms are together. You still have articulation on them and everything. Very cool. Very good. All right. So let's move down from there and check out his body and see what kind of articulation you have. So it looks like you have a little bit of waist movement here and it's more at his lower torso here. So it's right about here and you do have waist articulation and it doesn't feel like you're going to get a full spin out of it because what you have here is the pieces of his armor on his back armor are hitting on the lower part of his torso so on one side it's going around but I'm getting it to where it's hitting on the other okay so you get about a half a turn on his and you just have to be careful because again these back pieces of plate armor on his back they're hitting on the lower part of the armor or of his body so there is articulation at the waist it's rotation it's just a little awkward and then you can see how it's on his body there the the, the lower part of his waist is kind of cut at an angle or I guess the lower part of his torso is cut at an angle, so it's lower in the back here versus it's higher in the front here. And then I'm trying to see if he has like a forward and backwards motion, and it doesn't appear to. So then we're going to go down to his legs here, and you can see they put like some little bit of damage, like he lost some of the paint on his legs. There's like little gray highlights on his legs here. And then you have attached at the hip, so you have, where his leg is attached at the hip, you have side to side, and forward that far, versus backwards, that's about as far as you get at the hip there. And it is on a ball joint, and you can see you get kind of like a, you can wiggle it back and forth this way, and you can swing it forward and back. Okay, there you go. So... What you have here is if you have the leg like tilted inwards like this from the front, you have full motion forward. But to go to get full motion backwards, you got to kind of tilt it so the front part of the leg is tilted in like this and then you get the full backward swing on the on the leg. So very cool. And then very interesting. What's this here? It looks like part of the leg moves with the Okay, so what you have here is this back part of the leg here, this dark gray part. When you swing it back, it kind of hits this white part at his hip, and it pushes it forward a little bit. But it's just, you're just bending the plastic, so you want to be careful with that. Because it is, it looks like it's on a little tiny tab right there, so you can break it loose. Okay, and then let's go down to his knee here, and... He's probably going to have a pretty interesting knee. Okay, very cool. Let's see here. Hmm. Okay, so he does have two points of articulation at his knee. And it's a little bit easier to see from the back. But there, on his lower knee, there's a point of articulation. And on his upper knee, there's a point of articulation. So you can fold his knees all the way, or his legs all the way back like that. So that's pretty cool. And it looks like that's about it. There's just forward and backwards motion on his knee with two points of articulation. And then going down to his ankle here, it looks like you have multiple points of articulation. So what, what you got going on here at his ankle is, let's take a look at this, is you have a point right here where it goes forward and backwards. There's a little hinge point. And then also on his clawed foot, you have, but it's right above where the foot is attached to the ankle, you have a rotation. 
So you can rotate his foot at where the ankle would be and up in his the middle part of his leg. You can swing it forward about that far and then swing it backwards and it goes backwards about that far. So that appears to be all of his points of articulation on his, let's see, I'm already having problems with this arm coming apart on me here. Let's see, get this arm back together. Okay, I wanna keep his arms together for now until we get into the lightsabers. But there you go, two-armed Grievous. And I'm trying to see here if the fins on his helmet move at all. And it doesn't appear to be, they are flexible, so you can kind of like flex them, but they don't, it doesn't look like they move. So let's do one little final check with Grievous here. And I just want to see, because I've heard some rumors online that he doesn't stand all that well. And I'm kind of nervous about that. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Getting him to stand, he is standing on his own, but I have a feeling when you put the lightsabers and the cape and everything else on him, we might be talking about something different here, but just unaccessorized, he will stand. And so let's take a look here and see what kind of interaction, how he interacts with the lightsabers. So real quick here, let's look, I'm going to put General Grievous down for a second. And for those of you who are enthusiastic about the lightsaber handles, just to save time here, I'll show you what all four of them look like at once. Um, and again, you have two green and two blue and I'll try to rotate them here. And they're very detailed. There's a lot of buttons and red highlights, gold highlights, black highlights and they all appear to be a little bit different so there's no copying or duplicates in the lightsaber handles so that is cool so of course what we have to check here is do the lightsaber handles separate from the blade because of the cape and yes they do so very cool alright let's take a blue and a green and since we have him in the two-handed position and see how he interacts with these things so we'll go ahead and put a lightsaber in each hand and I like what I'm feeling so far it feels like he's got a good grip on it on them and this one's actually a little bit <laughs> looks like you might have an easier time going through one hand at a time okay and then again, we're trying to connect the, keep the hands. I want to, until we get a little bit further on here, I want to keep them, keep them just two-handed Grievous for now. So there you go. Two-handed Grievous with a lightsaber in each hand. Okay, and we, we have two-handed Grievous, and we're just checking to see how well he holds on to them. And he's got a really good grip on them. They're not coming loose. And... It actually seems like having the lightsabers in his hand kind of help keep the hands together. And so there you go. And of course, what we want to do is switch him to... Whoops. Pop the blade out here. I didn't want to do that. Let's go ahead and take the lightsabers back out into hand mode. And separate him into four-armed Grievous. And... Okay, and wow, this is really an impressive figure as far as having it all four hands with articulation, or all four arms with articulation, everything. I'm I'm very impressed. So I know it's not perfect, but you gotta admit this is a complicated figure to pull off, and they did a pretty good job with it. So we'll put a blue and a green in each side. And what I will do is each try to aim the handle. Because again, once you split his arms up, 
then of course so you have less fingers in each hand so i'm kind of concerned that he may lose the ability to grip the lightsabers and it doesn't appear to be that way so far seems to have a good grip on them it's a little bit loose on that one okay So there you go, he's got a grip on four lightsabers, and all of them feel good and tight, all the hands, and except this one here is a little bit loose, but the lightsaber's not coming out. If you shake him, he's holding on to them, they're staying in there, and now what my real concern is, will General Grievous stand with all four lightsabers in his hand? Because I can already feel there's like a little bit more weight to the figure. <sighs> Come on, General. All right. So, there you go. I'm getting him to stand with all four lightsabers. And very cool. I like it. All right. So, what I want to do from here is check out the blaster. How he interacts with this blaster. And we'll check it with how does he hold it with two fingers. Because, again, when you split the hands, you go from four fingers and two thumbs to two fingers and one thumb in each hand. So what I want to do is see how he interacts with this blaster. And, again, just to get, give you a closer look at the blaster, here it is. Pretty cool little blaster there. And let's see how he holds on to this thing. And it doesn't look like you're going to get it. I'm trying to see. Okay, there you go. I'm trying to get his fingers into the actual trigger guard so that it looks more natural and more authentic. And you can see it does work. You can get the fingers in the trigger guard. He's got a really good grip on this thing. He's not letting go of it. I'm impressed. Very good. It's not coming out. Very cool. Okay. And just to be thorough, let's try it on a bottom hand because that was a top hand, what we're doing. And I. Very cool. Okay. So there you go. On the bottom hand as well. And again, the way you tell the difference, the bottom hands have the peg for the thumb and the top hands have the hole for the thumb or I guess that would be the male part and the versus the female part of the arm so anyway we're looking at this blaster okay there you go and you can put it on the bottom of the hand and both both just looking at both hands as we're, I'm going through this figure here both hand sculpts appear to be pretty much pretty much identical so I'm gonna assume we'll do it real quick to be thorough here that he will hold it in both hands and yes he does on the top and whoop. and again we'll check to see the bottom here <laughs> this thing is going to have to be a durable figure. There's going to be a lot of pushing and pulling on these fingers and thumbs. If you're going to actually unbox this guy and play with him a little bit. Hmm. Okay, there you go. Again, you can see here that the little peg on his hand, because the blaster kind of has little... The handle's obviously thinner than the body, so you got the little pegs that hold his hands together, or kind of on his, what would be his left hand arms, or on the bottom here. It's a little bit more tricky to get it in. You can see where the peg is hitting on the, on the blaster there. But he does have a grip on it. It's in there good. Very good. Okay. So, what I want to try next is and I'm trying to get these arms in a position where I can reconnect them here 
and very interesting cheese man this just these arms have so much articulation to them it's almost like a little puzzle <laughs> okay very good very good all right there you go okay so let's real quick here i'm going to put the general down and we're going to look at his cape and again i'm this seems like it's a little bit off to me and what I remember from the film is he had multiple pockets in the cape for holding lightsabers and it seemed like he had some on each side and it just seems like they kind of, I wouldn't even say they're centered, they're off center a little bit and they just have four little stitched pockets in there and of course, so we're going to want to, and I'm trying not to get the handles mixed up with the green and the blue. I want to get the blade back in the right lightsaber. There's so many lightsabers. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I'm just trying to put them in an order where I can remember to put a green one back into a, a green handle and a blue one back into a blue handle. But let's go ahead and take, take these guys apart. I'm going to take the handles off all the lightsabers. Got the two blue. And then we have the two green ones here and we have taken the blades off of all the lightsabers and there you go and let's pocket them up and see what we get here let's see how that looks so all right so there you go for Adding them to your collection, there is General Grievous's lightsaber collection in the cape. And we'll go ahead and put the cape back on him here and see how he interacts with them. And so one of the things, again, I wanted to check here is how does the General stand with his cape on? Is that something that is a problem or not a problem and there you go so he is standing with the cape on and the lightsabers are in the pocket and very good so what do we have here so there you go oops we've got one falling out here lightsabers in the pocket cape on and very good so we're reassembling all the lightsabers from the fallen Jedi that General Grievous killed. And then what I want to do again is recape him. And then let's go with the four armed general here. Man, there's just so much. Again, these arms are pretty impressive for. A freaking all the points of articulation on this guy very cool okay so I want to start off by putting the lightsabers back in his hands and then what my goal here is is I want to see if we can get him to stand with all four lightsabers in in hand and I'm gonna switch these up because it just seems like he'll grip onto that that this was the hand I was having a little bit of trouble getting him to hold on and this trying to put one that has a little bit thicker handle into that hand. And so you can see the cape isn't totally wanting to work with me here when you have all four arms out. And I'm just trying to get him in a nice pose to see if we can get him to have a nice picturesque <laughs> standing. Okay, what I wanted why I'm doing this is of course we want to pose him for Let's see, will he stand with 
the cape and all four lightsabers, a lightsaber in each hand. All right. Very good. He will do it. And there you have it, everyone. The Droid General, General Grievous, in his 6-inch Black Series. Very cool. Very good. I'm very impressed with this figure. Is it perfect? No. But for what they're trying to accomplish here, a very complicated figure on a very complicated character, I think they did a pretty good job. All right, everyone. Again, there you have it. Here is General Grievous with all four arms out a lightsaber in each hand, the cape on his back, and he is in the standing position. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying the videos. I hope you like the content. If you are, please subscribe to the channel. We would love to have your support here. And again, thanks for watching. This is General Grievous Black Series 6 inch figure review. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will talk to you guys later. Bye.